Hi, I hope you can all hear me okay. Um, my name is Paul Oxley. I'm here to talk to you about uh, remortgaging my property or your property as it would be. Um, the idea and purpose of this webinar is just to give you a bit of an outline of remortgaging, um, give you an insight of the reasons why people do it, what the benefits are and things to look out for. But I'm also giving you uh, a little bit of uh, input into uh, the legal process as well, and just so you know what to expect if you go through a new mortgage and what your solicitor will have to do, and it's not necessarily as straightforward as uh, uh, as you might think. So let's get cracking. So what is a remortgage? Well, a remortgage is where you take out a new mortgage on a property you already own, uh, either if to replace a, your existing mortgage or to borrow money against your property. Now. The reasons why people do this is generally to look at getting more money available to them, you know, so they can use it for, I don't know, possibly uh, purchasing a car or, or, or even paying another in a house. But the main reason would be to get more money out of your house. Now, remortgage is when you've already got one, a mortgage on the property. So if you're looking to actually just put a mortgage on there, it would not be classed as a remortgage in a way. Uh, so that's just leave you it would be to replace an existing one, okay? Um, just thinking there, before I go any further with this, uh, we are doing questions uh, towards the end of, of all these slides. Um, there is a button for questions and chat as well. If we can have a list of those, it might be a good idea to do these as we're going along, and then I'll tackle each and every question individually. All right, so I'm going to go into the next one. So... What should I consider when uh, remortgaging my property? Well, there's plenty of things to consider, really. Um, sorry. Uh, so you need to consider uh, remortgaging if your mortgage, your current mortgage is about to end. Generally, remortgages, uh, mortgages have a lifespan. Uh, they're probably about 25, 30 years, can be a little bit more depending on your current age. Now, these mortgages um, have their best have their best interest rates and their best products towards the beginning of a, of, of, of a mortgage. So it's generally within the first five or three years. Um, so it's always best if you've got a current mortgage with a, with someone at this moment in time, it's probably best to get that out, just check and see what your product is that you've got at the moment and seeing if it changes, which it generally does after three or five years, depending on what you've agreed with. So if you've got one, you've had a mortgage, you've been in a house for the last three or five years, it's definitely worth just looking at your your current house and your mortgage and see what you've got and what you can be paying. Maybe not now, but in the future, because it could change. Your monthly payments could change depending on the product that you've got. And that's just one of the next one. So um, it could change in the sense that you get a better rate. So if you look about, you might find a better rate, uh, which would mean, when I say a better rate, it means a, a rate of interest. Unfortunately, mortgage lenders do give you money uh, and put interest on top of this. Now, depending when you've got a mortgage, you might have got a great, great product and you've had a fantastic time paying very little money um, over a set period of time, but you will only get that for a certain amount of time, like a three or five year period. It's totally different depending on which, which mortgage lender you've got and what product you've got at the time, so it's definitely worth looking at it then. Another thing to point out and have a look at is, um, especially in the current market, if you bought a home, a house uh, three years ago, uh, quite more than likely, you know, your house value has gone up. Now, if your house value has gone up, you're probably in a quite a good position to have a look at uh, doing a remortgage on a property because it will affect your uh, loan to value. Now, but when I say loan to value is how much equity you've got in the house. It generally, uh, the more equity you've got in your house to, uh, in comparison to your loan, it's generally you get a better interest rate. So um, say if you've got, for example, you paid 100,000 for a house three years ago and 75% of that, so 75 grand was a, with a mortgage, but now you've got, you've had your house for revalued and it's 125,000, you will probably, you will still only need, well, maybe, uh, if you just take out the same amount of money, um, you've got a better rate, so you should get a better rate on that. So it's some definitely worth having a look at if, if you know your house has gone up. Um, similarly, exactly the same to now, um, there's quite a lot of concerns about uh, interest rises over the next uh, next six months or even a year. Now, it's all guessing and second-hand guessing, but interest rates aren't going to get any better than they are at the moment. Um, they're only going to go one way, and that's up. So if you're in a position where you are 
looking to your your current mortgage or your mortgage product or your mortgage rate is about to uh, to uh, run out uh, in the next in the next six months. So yeah, it's definitely worth looking at what's what's available to you. It might be the case that you the product you've got you've actually had a fantastic deal and it's pretty worth to see look out and just run out the rest of your mortgage however it's always best to sort of see what's on the market and see what's available uh, just one other thing about interest rates and, and lenders and, and mortgages um, not every mortgage is the same um, every mortgage is totally different um, each lender although they're trying to give you money they always have little bits that are a little bit different. So you will have to, when you go shopping and looking out for these things, just make sure you're getting what you want uh, and what's right for you. Um, it could be a case that you, uh, you've, you're in a fantastic position where when you got your mortgage out originally, you only wanted to pay, well, for example, 500 pound a month because that's all you could afford. Now, it's you know you've had might have had a very good time since then you know you've had a you've had pay rises or you know you've you've come into a bit of money you want to pay a bit more off your mortgage but your lender won't let you, let you do that uh, some lenders unfortunately <laughs> um, want you to keep paying a set amount uh, just because on a, on a monthly basis just because they uh, they they're looking to get to, to prolong that mortgage as much as possible because they want to get more money out of you. So again, that could be another reason why you should consider remortgaging your property because you might be able to find a, a better mortgage where you could, you know, start paying more for a month, have a less interest rate as well. It's all about um, looking for what's best for you and also seeing if you can have the same amount of money paying out but at a better rate so you pay off less uh, so you have to pay off less in the long term it's all about what's best for you um, at the time and your circumstance change your change your circumstance changes on a on a monthly basis now you are set in again probably within three three years or five years depending on what product you've got originally but after that point in time or up to that point in time you are within your right to see what's out there so, like think of it similar to your your car insurance very similar but obviously the costs are a, a lot more uh, another reason you could be you could have a, an interest only remortgage and you want to move on to a, a, a repayment now this could be something that's uh, interest only just for, for those that are just for clarification interest only mortgages where you only pay uh, again I'll go back to that example of having a hundred thousand pounds property purchased 75,000 pounds mortgage now if you've got if you are an interest only you will only pay the interest you won't actually pay anything off that 75,000 pounds so after the three-year first product and irrespective of the thousands that you've paid um, it we will still have a balance of at least 75,000 on there whereas with a, re a repayment you're looking at um, digging in and delving into that that 75,000 on a monthly basis Obviously, you're paying interest as well, but you're also paying on the uh, the, the actual 75,000 that you got loaned to you originally. Now, it's all about circumstance, and it goes about again. It's all about looking at your current circumstance and what you can afford. But these are the kind of things that you want to consider. And obviously, the main one uh, is you want to borrow more. Um, if you look at and this kind of interlinks with every other point really. If your home's gone up in value and uh, you can borrow more more money on it, you know, possibly on the same rate of interest that you had previously. Um, it could be for an, an extension or anything at all. Or you want to, you know, it could be whatever. But you could borrow more money and not have any more uh, outgoings in the sense that you're not paying any more on a monthly basis. It's all worth considering. So. They're the things what you should consider and why you should consider remortgaging, but what should you be aware of? Now, it's not all plain sailing and it's remortgaging is not for everyone. However, what I would say to you that if you are going to go down the route of remortgage, just make sure you do these things and take, take notes. Now, on your current remortgage, you will have an early repayment charge. Now, the early repayment charge will... Um, will be in your mortgage offer. Now the other repayment charge can be in the thousands. Now just going back into the product that I was talking about before. Now um, the remortgage early repayment charge 
will generally say in your mortgage offer if it's going to be for the first three years or two years or could even be locked depending on when you've locked yourself into. But if you want to change your mortgage with your current lender, um, there could be an early repayment charge there. Now, if you, if you decide to go with the same lender that you've currently got, they might waive that early repayment charge if you are borrowing more than you've already borrowed. Now, so that is something that can be quite costly if you're not aware of. So that is something you should definitely go away, have a look at your mortgage and see uh, what, what, if any, the early repayment charge is. Another thing to consider, not likely in this current climate, however, has the value of your house dropped since your last mortgage? If it has, similarly to when it, if it's gone up, if it goes down and you're looking to remortgage, your loan to value is going to change. So if your loan to value has changed, it means it's going to affect the, the rates that the mortgage lender is going to give to you. It will affect massively. Um, again, going back to that £100,000 house that you've bought, if it's gone down to 90,000, it's it's a massive jump from a percentage point of view. So when a lender is wants to lend a more uh, monies to an individual or a, a group of individuals, they always look at what's best for them. Now, if there's a lot more equity in the property, they're they've got a lot more confidence in people, confidence in people. So they're willing to give people better rates because they will see it as less risk to them. Now, the, if, if your value of your house has gone down or dropped down, that is something to consider because it might be the case that it's probably not for you right now. Another thing to think of is that the possible, <laughs> it's quite easy to get carried away of uh, looking at a, a mortgage, uh, and saying that you might go down, I don't know, £100 a month, which is a lot of money. Um, but there can be costs involved in a remortgage. You will still have to pay for a valuation and admin, and admin costs as well could be charged. Now, the reason for this is that even though you've been in the house for a long period of time, it could be a case that you're going through a different lender. So to them, this property is totally new to them. And they still want to undertake the same exact same checks. So they'll still want to do the valuation costs. Uh, they'll still want a proper valuation of the property. And they'll want to do their due diligence similar in the exact same way as if they were buying a property. Now, if you're going through the same lender, I would not be surprised if they still wanted to do a valuation of the property. They might not charge as much, but they will probably still want some kind of valuation and the administrative costs can be quite hefty. Um, there could be hundreds of pounds, even more I've seen. So just be wary of that. When you are looking at doing a remortgage, make sure you input that in so as, as part of your costs. It can be the case that it could be added to the loan or the, the value of the mortgage, but it is an extra cost you should be aware of. So the big thing for us now since uh, well, I think it's the beginning of this year, there was a mortgage market review. Now this is for the benefit of borrowers, but at the same time it's made it a lot more difficult uh, for people to, to, to get money off lenders and banks. Now the, the banks many years ago, well probably five, six, seven years ago, um, could have been seen as being quite frivolous with their money. It's not the case anymore. There are a lot tighter requirements on lending. They do a lots of checks. I think the, the application process can be quite lengthy. And this you could be going through exactly the same lender that you've currently got a mortgage with, but they will they will definitely undertake their due diligence. They will make sure everything is in place. They've got they'll ask for up-to-date bank statements, make sure how, how long you've been in your current job. They're lending and they will make sure that you can afford this property on a uh, afford the cost of this mortgage on a daily on a monthly basis but they really look into your tight uh, um, financial background and everything around it as well it can be quite extensive so even if you put tight put in everything else they do look at everything all over again so be be mindful of that and don't necessarily be taken aback if you've got a mortgage with someone and you're asking for less, but they're not willing to give you a mortgage uh, for one reason or another. 
Um, if that does happen, I would advise you to have a look at your um, credit expert or something similar to that, just to see what's popped up in there, because they use them as a guide for a financial uh, when, when they take out financial mortgages. And again, just in line with that, it's, imp it's important to plan ahead. If you are going to do a, a remortgage, just make sure you can afford it. Uh, think of every kind of situation that could pop up, you know, change in, like, any kind of change in circumstance. Like, it's great to, uh, it's, it's a great feeling to, to look and think that you're going to have um, uh, more money in the bank because you've, already, you, you've extended your mortgage or you're getting more a, a lump sum. But just be mindful of what you're doing. I've, I've come across too many clients in the past where they've been caught out by uh, higher interest rates and have not been able to, uh, to purchase, uh, to continue with the house and they've had to sell quickly. Um, it is really, really important to plan ahead. Now, what I would say to you is make sure you, when you are going through these things, that you, have, uh, you take the advice of a financial advisor. Now, the financial advisors are, are given by the financial ombudsman. Now, they, it is their job to speak to you, look at your current situation, and advise you accordingly what mortgage is best for you. Now, they will just give, they will, they will advise you on the advice, uh, on, they will advise you on the information you provide them. So it's really important that you're really open with them. But the financial advisors, um, they will look and have a series of mortgages that they will use, uh, and a comfortable will be for you to use for your individual circumstance. Like I say, going back to before, there are loads of mortgages out there. There are loads of banks, and each bank has got plenty and plenty of different mortgages that they're on offer. You just need to make sure you find the right one that's right for you, and I would advise you to get a financial advisor involved to make sure, because they, they point you in the right direction. So if to plan ahead, make sure you get the relevant advice from a financial advisor. Okay, big question. This is where it can, I become relevant, I guess. So why do I need to use a solicitor when remortgaging the property? Now, each lender um, has their due diligence and compliance regulations. Now, every time they um, lend uh, money to a borrower, they instruct a solicitor. Now, they instruct a solicitor to do all the legal title checks, and they also do and to make sure everything is uh, from a legal standpoint, which when we talk about a legal standpoint from um, a title aspect or anything like that, uh, a solicitor gets involved and will make sure that if the worst things happen and you're unable to pay for a mortgage, uh, pay your mortgage and it goes into an equity or anything like that, and the lender has to take ownership of the property, they need to make sure that they can sell it so they make they they instruct a solicitor either on your behalf or you advise them to instruct a solicitor you advise them which solicitor you're going with and that solicitor's due diligence and compliance needs to be full on to make sure that we are both go go in accordance with the guidelines sent by the the lender now the lender utilize like the way the lender instructs a solicitor as part of guidance for, for the guidance, it's called the CML, uh, Council of Mortgage Lenders. Now we have a handbook that we need to abide by, and every solicitor needs to abide by when when they accept instructions from a lender. Now the way we accept instructions is by way of a mortgage offer. Now I think a lot of you have probably heard of that term, but a mortgage offer is the instruction from a lender for a solicitor to act on their behalf. In a mortgage offer, it will outline every little bit of this mortgage. It will advise the um, mortgage product that you've agreed with your financial advisor and the lender, if you've gone direct with them. And it will also uh, put in certain time frames in respect of how, how long this mortgage offer is applicable for. And um, also will drill down what extra charges like your early repayment charge and everything. So all this information that we discussed earlier on is in this mortgage offer. It is important that you keep a copy of this mortgage offer if you, when you buy a house or when you uh, do a remortgage because it's something that you need to re revert back to at a later time. But a solicitor's duties are at this point and not only to you as the client but also to the lender. Now, if 
the our our, our duties are conflict in any kind of way uh, we're unable to act now that would that would happen if um, let's say the uh, a client has had to uh, has given us some advice that is contrary to what the, the lender believes and the, the client is not allowing us to speak to the lender about that information it could be a financial matter uh, in the sense that you're getting a gift from a client or a, a, a gift from a, a family friend but you don't want to advise a, um, yeah, the lender we would need to make the lender aware so we act it's, it is really important for a, a lender to use a, a solicitor because they use them for the legal aspect of the title uh, uh, of, of, of dealing with the registration and making sure that everything is where it should be right. so the final bit is what is the legal process so from the start, I, um, once we've got um, the legal, the instructions, and I'm, I'm talking about this just so to give you a guide of, um, it's not necessarily just as easy as it sounds when you get a remortgage. It can still be quite complex because we do still need to do our due diligence and we still need to make sure that uh, the lender is happy with everything. So we would get your full instructions we would take them uh, in accordance in the exact kind of way as we would um, the uh, you buying a property really and we would ask what is the purpose of the remortgage where you're getting your funding from and we would on receipt of those instructions wait for the mortgage to come in now when the mortgage offers come in we've got a few options um, we can request searches depending on uh, the, the type of mortgage lender that we've got or alternatively we can do uh, search indemnity insurance um, which some uh, lenders are quite happy for us to do again we'll revert down to the council of mortgage lenders handbook or the cml handbook uh, which will advise us in, uh, in accordance with us we would then check the mortgage offer make sure again it's exactly as, uh, as as we discussed in your initial instructions uh, if there's anything that's out out of place we'll advise you and and similarly if you're getting anything further which is not noted on the uh, the mortgage offer like again a gift or, or anything like that we'd advise the lender um, it's worth noting that all correspondence between um, the lender and uh, the solicitor has to be uh, in written form so it has to be by fax so if you're having uh, any issues or any delays or anything like that with a solicitor and waiting for information back from uh, a, a lender or a solicitor, it's, it's because every communication that we can rely on from a lender has to be by fax. And again, that's, that's due to the Council of Mortgage Lenders and uh, their handbook, which we have to buy by. Once, we're, once the mortgage offer's in, we've checked the legal title, which uh, involves pulling off office copy entries from the land registry which outlines the full legal title of the property um, we're happy with all that um, we're, we're, you know the property is sound and safe it should be a case if it is a remortgage that the the solicitors have done the correct due diligence uh, when you first bought the property um, however it can be the case that um, something's missed and irrespective if something's missed or not it's the solicitor's duty who is dealing with the remortgage to treat it as a first time they're looking at it and do do their due diligence as they would not a normal purchase so they've done their due diligence everything is okay the mortgage office in place will then look at uh, sending out contracts to you to sign uh, sorry a mortgage deed for you to sign along with a full break of costs and everything that's coming back and then it's a matter of uh, getting your signed documents together and, and agreeing a completion date now a completion date is when uh, the remortgage takes place we would then look at uh, we would ask for a, a completion date say for in, in seven that working days time we'll then work with your current uh, lender uh, to get a, a full redemption figure any deeds or anything like that and make sure we've got all the finances in place to, to, to finalize the, the, the remortgage if you're getting funds sent back to you we will then, uh, on the day of completion or uh, one, one day after, if, if needs be, we'll send these proceeds on to you. But again, this is just a generic uh, guide to, to, the, to, to the legal process. 
Um, what we do find is that each and every client and uh, their needs need to be met, and we like to do that. So um, it can be a little bit different, the process, but this is just generally what it is. Now, one question that I, I did want to mention here before I go into, into anything else, um, leasehold properties, they can be a little bit different and a lot more complex. Um, leasehold properties are generally, um, uh, well, we, 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 we need to do extra due diligence. We need to look at um, service charges, ground rent, building insurance. Uh, we also need to look at the lease in detail, which can be quite complex. Uh, we need to make sure that if there's anything that um, the lender thinks, again, is happening on the lease but doesn't really happen. For example, it could be the case that the lender believes that the actual lease is um, 80 years up, and we've got 80 years left on the lease. Um, but the lender will, uh, if we find out when checking the lease that there's only 65 years and we might have to look at a, a lease extension or something like that. But it can be quite complex, a leasehold property and remortgage. So if your property is a leasehold property, a flat or, or something like that, just bear that in mind. It can be a little bit more complex. Now, I would have thought your solicitor would advise you that at the start, but it can be com quite complex and therefore can be a little bit more lengthy than a normal mortgage. So bear that in mind. Right, I think that is it for me now. I have got uh, um, just one last thing to take, really. Again, I think I probably played it before, but like a house purchase, a remortgage should be taken, undertaken with a certain amount of care. Take advice from qualified experts who will find a mortgage suitable for your needs and um, communicate everything with your solicitor. Explain what you're doing the mini-mortgage for, explain what you're trying to achieve, and you've got, you will have good people. You have your solicitor, your financial independent advisor, everyone will be working for the goal similar to you, but the main thing is, is communication. And as long as you communicate as much as possible to your solicitor and you can keep the communication up, you'll find a quick and easy uh, remortgage to go through. So I'll leave you with that. Um, I'm gonna take questions. Um, if you haven't got any questions, I've, I've got um, I've got one for you um, that that could be quite quite costly that I'll go through. But if we don't get any questions at all, uh, we'll leave it at that. I'll I'll, I'll hold on for about five ten minutes. Um, one thing that I, I do think that is quite I didn't mention in the slides actually is a good question is um, stamp duty. Is it payable on a remortgage? Not generally no. However. Right. If there's a change in the title, so you're remortgaging on the basis that it's uh, going as part of a transfer of equity and a remortgage, I suppose. You trans you've currently got a mortgage with just one person yourself, but you want to get your partner involved with a new mortgage as well. Um, that could involve a stamp duty, but again, um, we'd have to take each and every um, case as it comes. Um, the other thing is, as well, you, you might have two mortgages on the property. Uh, can I can I remortgage even if you've got a second mortgage? Um, you can do that. It's it's very easy to do, but you would need to communicate with both lenders. Now, I would say that, for example, there's generally um, well, I'm going to uh, say we've got Northern Rock as your your main lender, and then you've got a second mortgage with Aldermore. Now, if you want, all the more, uh, Northern Rock is giving you like 50% of the of the monies you need, but you want to up, up that to 75%. Any changes to the to the mortgages, which you would need to communicate with both lenders. Um, so be mindful of that and advise your um, financial advisor that you've got two mortgages in the property, because what they will not be, what the financial advisor will not have, is um, full access to what charges are over the property. This is similar to any loans that you might have as well. I think that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave some feedback and um, I will call it a day. Have a great day. Thank you.